Your tires affect your grip, your speed, and actually the overall feel of your mountain bike. And there's so many different variables. Where do you start when it comes to designing a tire for your average mountain biker, but also one that top pro racers are gonna to wanna to use? Well, I'm here in sunny California to take a look at some brand new tires, but also pick the brains of a guy who spends his time designing those tires to try and win those World Cup races, but also to appeal to your average mountain biker. So I'm here with Ken Avery, the Senior Vice President of Product Design for Vittoria Tires. Ken, when you're thinking about a new tire, where do you start? You know, you have to kind of think about what the athlete or just rider, right? It doesn't have to be a racer, just a normal rider, what they're gonna be going through, what they are trying to conquer. And we start with the terrain in that respect. Uh, then you have to consider the tread design, of course. And then you put that together into a casing, which will provide dependability, stability, you know, a good rolling resistance, of course, uh, and of course, ease of use and fitment. So I guess with tread design, uh, for the average layman like myself, it's kind of, I don't understand what's going on with the, the slices and the, the shape of the actual rubber you're putting down there. But obviously for a more, you know, a downhill uh, and enduro, a more aggressive tire, there's more rubber there, there's bigger knobs. When we're talking about a cross country tire, you know, lower, but there's sort of intricacies, I guess, to the actual shape of the rubber, is there? There are, yeah. So with cross country, it's, it's mostly an endurance discipline, right? So you're gonna be covering a greater distance. You're gonna need that efficiency. You will need control. You will need grip, of course. Uh, you will need, you know, a low rolling resistance. So it's a balance of the rolling resistance and the terrain and the control in that terrain that you're trying to conquer. So to do that, you know, the tread design is gonna have to have different elements that provide those traits. So obviously on the, on the, the side of the tire, when you're cornering, you're gonna be rolling over on the side. There's bigger, softer rubber there as well. But in the middle, it's quite interesting on this new Piota. This, you know, it's obviously low profile, but there's a lot of different shapes going on. And the sipes, that's, so that's the cuts in those rubber knobs as well. It is, yeah. So typically you'll see a little slice on, you know, the, the knob surface of a tire. And that is to enable directional flex, which is, you know, purposely engineered to provide an effective edge, which will dig in or roll in a specific way. When you have such a low profile tread, such as this peyote, oftentimes what we'll do is things that resemble sipes, but they're actually elements of the tread. So for instance, on this one, there is a very fast rolling center, what we call ribbon on this one. So it's an interlocking pattern, which then tapers out into the mid tread. And so on this tire, you'll see a low profile center for that super fast rolling. It also keeps the center of that casing really supple to reduce rolling resistance, but yet provides engagement for climbing and braking and control. And as you lean off of that, that tread gets deeper. And then that ribbon alternates with a row of knobs, a row of ribbon into a proper side knob. So you can kind of have your cake and eat it too with having a tire that rolls fast, but you can really lean on in the corners. This sounds quite simple. This thing really confuses me. So when you look at tires, most yeah. of them, they, they kind of point forward. You know, they, they, yeah. you can look at the direction of it. Sure. But obviously when it's down at the bottom, it's facing that way and not facing that way. Yep. And you're designing it not only to grip for maybe pedaling sure. and for rolling, but also for braking. So you're thinking about two directions. Well, no, you're thinking about all 3D. Sure, yeah. So when that tire is on the bottom of the tread, which side of it is doing the break-in? I love example? this. I love this question. So we're going to get nerdy, uh, and which is not going to surprise you at all, <laughs> knowing me. But basically, you'll see uh, in all the Vittoria tires, you'll see what's known as a V formation, right? If you're riding your bike, you're going to look down to the front tire, you're going to see a V that points forward to your point. Yeah. And then when that goes upside down and backwards, it's pointing backwards. And the reason is because you're riding in this direction, right? And then you turn your bars, because you want to go that direction, but you know, all your momentum is bringing you this direction, right? So that V opposes, or at least when you lean on that side of the V, it opposes drift in that direction and right. points you in the direction you want to go. Yeah. So for that reason, you see a V formation on a lot of our tires. 
Right, let's talk about compound. So how hard or soft the rubber is. I'm on a trail tire, the Mazza, where there mm -hmm. is the race version, so softer rubber. Mm -hmm. So I'm guessing softer rubber equals more grip. A lot of people assume that. And, uh, you know, in, in a general sense, you know, a softer rubber will conform to the terrain uh, more and it, it will give you that feeling. Um, but, you know, if you look at tires from like 20 years ago, when we were, you know, racing downhill kind of thing, it's like uh, back then the tire was really slow, but it was grippy. And so now what we're trying to do is make grippy tires that are also fast, right? So the compounds have evolved dramatically in this time. And, um, you know, the compound we use, example, like on this new XC race tire, is a compound that is reinforced with graphene as well as silica. And uh, yet it's softer than most XC tires would be. And the reason for that is to allow for the tire casing and the tread itself to conform to the terrain and create that grip uh, and you know climbing, braking, cornering, all of these things. But it also allows for a more supple feel. So despite the fact that it's actually grippier, it actually rolls faster. Now, then you might say, well, is it gonna wear out really fast, right? A lot of people, like especially the older tires that were softer compounds, they would just chunk out, right? Or yeah. knobs would rip off. Um, so we've conquered that by adding graphene and then we've improved the wet grip by adding silica. So this new silica graphene compound uh, rolls faster, yet it's like 11% grippier compared to a regular XC compound. So next on to build, so actually how the tire is constructed. And, and often like, you know, comparing our tires, I've got, you know, more material in there. So sure. it's more, puncture resistant, but yeah. when you're thinking about uh, designing these tires, do you have a weight in mind, but also are you thinking about all of it, you know, the rubber plus the build, how it all works together, I guess? Absolutely. So there are weight targets that are generally established within each category, right? Uh, in cross country and endurance discipline, weight is a factor. Uh, acceleration is a factor, right? You have less suspension um, and, and so you want the tire to be durable, but you also have to have it be lightweight enough to, to climb the massive hills that they do, right? So um, that is a conundrum from a design standpoint because, you know, durability and weight are oftentimes, you know, at odds with each other. So uh, with that said, uh, the targets within XC still have to be, you know, respected in this way while you kind of do all these other variables. So it can be quite challenging in that way. Uh, that said, these ones uh, and, and the new Mezcal as well, they're, you know, they're the, the low 700s. So uh, for a 2.4 tire, these are both available in 29 by 2.4 as an example, which is like another new size, right, for cross country, uh, you know, sort of an emerging trend. Uh, it's something that uh, to be able to hit that weight target still is quite a challenge, but it's something that we've had to think outside the box to achieve and, and uh, we've done it. So we've seen that, that kind of evolution of cross country racing now, you know, all those races are on longer travel bikes, slacker, or, you know, it's kind of being influenced by the rest of mountain biking, I guess, yeah. but mainly because of the courses are so demanding and they're looking at performance at the whole of the race. Yeah. So it's not just all out and out sort of climbing anymore, right. like maybe it was. And now we're seeing bigger tires as well. 2.4 seems pretty big, I guess. It is, right? I mean, you know, 2.4 uh, was almost a downhill size not that long yeah. ago. And it, I mean, we have athletes riding downhill on 2.4s. But um, for cross country, it comes down to uh, all that that we spoke about earlier in terms of the combination of what gets designed into the tire, but it's also about rider fatigue. Uh, these are, again, endurance racers, people who are looking to go super long distances, uh, optimizing performance for that. And if you can save that rider uh, from fatiguing, uh, they will be able to go harder uh, in that race and, and be, be able to go a further distance as well. Now that said, uh, as the courses have gotten a bit gnarlier, especially look at the World Cup stuff, I mean, it's, yeah. it's like tech now. Um, that larger volume also helps with a larger contact patch. Uh, it also allows the tire to flex more. Uh, which is another side benefit. I rarely puncture nowadays, to be fair. I know, we, you know, if I was racing, I guess I was pushing harder, and you do kind of run into those situations a bit more. Mm -hmm. So I look for a tire, most of I'm riding a trail tire, but if I am doing more aggressive riding, I go up to the enduro, and I look at the weight and I think, anything over the, you know, kilogram is gonna give me the protection I need. Mm -hmm. But looking back, say, at cross country, we still see some of those pro racers, you know, throwing races away because of punctures. Mm -hmm. So how do you think, you know, that can be sort of uh, avoided, I guess, from your side, but also their side of the deal as well. 
Yeah, there's two main ways. And the first one is, you know, while you're trying to solve the puzzle of all the other attributes that we spoke about, you know, durability still must be considered, right? So uh, that's number one. And, and, and that's the reason that we've, you know, moved to a different material casing on this uh, to still offer a lightweight, fast rolling option that, that has that protection and durability uh, inherently built in by using a different material. The other big one though is tire liners, right? So like an airliner insert, uh, for cross country, the airliner light is what it's called. That is actually less than the weight of just the sealant alone in your tire. Wrap your head around that. I mean, that's kind of yeah. nuts if you think about, like, you don't think about, like, how much does my sealant weigh, right? This People liner. Weigh and I, or like, if we pull <laughs> yeah, it, right? Yeah. These XC pros now are they're running low pressures to have that suppleness and to have that grip and performance. But then what happens is, you know, if you're in that situation, riding technical terrain, you, you do open yourself up to pinch flats, right? Um, but with an airliner light insert, uh, that is going to you know cushion uh, the bottom out while it's preventing burping. Uh, and in the event that say you break a spoke and you poke through your rim tape and you have a, an air loss of some point, um, well, you can still ride it as a run flat. So, you know, you've done all this training, you've traveled all this way to go to this event and you just want to finish. Um, you know, you can, you can finish that race out or even get back to your house or your car if you're at the local trail. One thing I think about is combination of wheels, but probably, you know, specifically rims and tires. I think things have got much better where a tubeless tire is relatively easy to set up now. In mm -hmm. the years gone by, you may have to be wrapping extra rim tape to making sure you're getting a good seal. Right. But also from kind of, you know, feel, often on a cross country bike you're running carbon rims, but wider than they used to be with mm -hmm. a, a lightweight tire and on right. the enduro side, maybe an aluminium rim with a bit more give. Mm -hmm. Do you know, do you think there's some improvement to be made between rim and tire sort of co-design almost? Yeah, we always look at this as a system. You know, with this with this tire construction itself, that alone is a system. The system of the compound with the, the casing and, and how that tread design works with all those things. Uh, that is a system, but the, the greater system of uh, the tire with the sealant, uh, with the valve, with the liner, as, as a system together is something that we always consider. And that is really, I think, a new frontier in terms of performance, especially when you consider, uh, you know, a bike that has maybe less travel than your bike, uh, but you're still trying to ride pretty gnarly terrain on it. Uh, and then at the same time have efficiency up the hills. It's quite a tall order for a designer to do this. Um, but at the same time, if you consider the system approach, you have a much clearer view of, of such a situation. Uh, and then the last thing that I will say is really, you know, ease of use is really something that I think uh, you really have to consider when you're approaching that system, right? So like, is the liner possible to put in with a tire lever, right? Um, and, and can you do this at home? And things like this. So uh, I think that's super important to consider. Right, cheers, Ken. Thank you very much. Thanks for all the info and all the intricacies of the tyre world. Super complicated, but you made it nice and clear. And thanks for riding as well. If you like this video, make sure, of course, to subscribe to GMBN Tech.